James Faulkner believes that the ICC World Cup 2015 semi-final between Australia and India would be a very good contest. However, he said that Australia aren't worried by India's changes in fortunes. India had failed to win a single game on their two down under leading up to the World Cup. However, they bounced back by winning seven matches in rows so far. Australia are an informed side and are favourites to win the World Cup. Faulkner also reflected on the 2013 ODI series in India, where scores over 300 were chased down on three occasions. In that series, Faulkner had won Australia a game in Mohali and then gave India a scare with a stone in Bangalore. From being a player who broke into the side as a bowler, Faulkner has mainly become an all-rounder. Not only is his bowling useful, but he's a handy batsman in the middle order with the ability to finish games. The India Tour in 2013 was the series where Faulkner started to show promise as a finisher. Speaking to reporters ahead of Australia's standing session at the SC on Monday, Faulkner said. Well, I think a lot depends on the wicket. Um, the last game we played here, the wicket was obviously very good against Sri Lanka. We made um, 360, I think, and, and they made over 300. So we saw a great one-day wicket. Um, so, yeah, I'm expecting, if it's much like that, I'm expecting a, a lot of runs scored. And I think if you look over the past between India and Australia, whether we played them over there in one-day series or recent ones or, or in Australia, you've seen a lot of runs. So I think that's what will what'll happen come game day. Oh look like I said before, a lot of it depends on the wicket if there's if there's bounce and carry, um, and it depends who you're coming up against. If you see a weakness you can try and I suppose expose that. But um, yeah, look we haven't spoken about the Indian team yet. It's only Monday and uh, at the moment we'll just concentrate on training and get ready get ready to go and we'll have our group discussion later in the week. Tim? Uh, Jones, the nerves play a part at all now. I mean, you're a couple of games away. The expectations have been there right from the start of the tournament. I mean, you obviously play some good cricket, but, you know, you play big games. Do, do nerves start coming into it now? Well, I think everyone's going to be nervous in their own little way, and it's up to them how they want to deal with it. Um, I think you can see a lot of, a lot of nerves are on show uh, a couple of nights ago, and um, I think that's good. Um, both teams are exposed, and um, I think if you don't have nerves, you've got issues. Considering how the Sri Lanka with the South African team banned out over here, do you think it's a bit less on the count that you don't have main spinners like of the caliber of Ravindra or Ravindra? Oh, I think, yeah, they're obviously world-class spinners. They've done their job for a long time, but look how our team and our lineup doesn't have that. Uh, we're going with a different team and um, we're playing in Australia, so we, we'll play the best 11. All the selectors will pick that. On this kind of script, not having spinners, maybe special spinners in the lineup. I think you saw the last game, like I said, touched on before against Sri Lanka, the, the wicket didn't really spin and it was quite easy to get hold of. So, um, yeah, I'm not too sure what makeup they'll go in. I'm not too sure what makeup we'll go in with. But, um, yeah, look, like, it's, like I said, a lot dictates the wicket and um, what, what I suppose what's produced come game day. James, could you talk about your strategy when you, when you go into chase a big total? Uh, is there any total that scares you or in an era where the bats are big and the boundaries are shorter? Uh, do you go in with going with an approach knowing that you can you can chase down any two. You talk about the psyche of a player like you, Maxwell. How do you guys go about your job? Oh, I think you've definitely got to have the belief, no matter what the total is that you're chasing. And um, yeah, look, I suppose you go about it. It's all about your start, whether whether you whether you're chasing or whether you're setting. If you start well with bat or ball, more times than not, you're going to end up in a position in the last 10, 15 overs when you when you can have a crack at chasing a big total. But um, look, I suppose yeah, come, come late in the innings. It might look great, you're hitting the winning runs or being there at the end, but a lot comes from the first 10, 15 overs from the openers and the top three to really get a, a set a platform for your team. Rob? Well, um, the, the music. Part of the test over there, you just compare like, in terms of the career card, I think a decent potential final. Yeah, I, I suppose it's, it's hard to comment on that uh, until until we walk out on, on the game. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure. I mean, I'm pretty open for, I suppose, the whole setup in general, I think it's going to be exciting. Like I said before, it's going to be a good, uh, a strong crowd um, and a lot of viewers. So I think everyone's really excited and uh, we'll just see what happens when we walk out on the ground. Yeah. And uh, I know you were asked this before, but the fact was India were here for three months, won one game, and went in the World Cup, won seven in a row. You must be worried about them or surprised about them or something in your own mind about their uh, turnaround form. Uh, not, not at all. I think the... Well, obviously, the test test what started the summer off, and, and one day cricket. I'm not surprised that they're doing well. Um, every time I come up against them, it's been a very good game of cricket, and it's gone right down to the wire. I think if you if you go back on the Indian series, and all over there, there was a 
a lot of runs scored and a, a lot of great chases. And um, likewise, when we played them here, we've but most teams have scored 300 and and been there or thereabouts at chasing it. So um, yeah, they're a good opposition, um, and we're looking forward to Thursday. I think it's going to be a, it's going to be a great occasion. Up with that. Um, I don't know if too much has too much has changed, has it? I'm not in there in the sanctum or training with them. I'm not too sure where how you want me to answer that one. Up with that. Did you guys expect you to have an overburden support that you Australia playing at home? Have you ever experienced something like that? I'm playing at home and watching the opposition have a better support and stand like something. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I suppose it was like like I said before, it was the last game we played India here that was a washout. The the fans were, were unbelievable in supporting India, and um, like I said, I'm, I suppose everyone's expecting that um, come match day as well. Last two over here, Dan. Well, I just want to ask you about Mitchell Stark, and maybe um, you know about 12 months ago, I probably wasn't sure of his role, and maybe wasn't too sure in the group and that kind of thing. Can you just talk about how how he's developed in that way? Oh, look. Uh, I suppose it's hard to comment on another player, but I think the way he started his one-day cricket, he obviously he's taken wickets from the from the start of his career, and hence why his record's so good. And um, I know the boys don't face him or like facing him in the nets at all because of how fast he bowls. And I think he's his major threats when he's swinging. If he's swinging the ball at 140, 150 k's back into the batsman, it's it's quite tough. And and that's what he's done so far in this tournament. So hopefully he can do that for the for the semi and then hopefully the final. Yeah, look, it's it's a fantastic skill he's got. I know he spends a lot of time in the nets working on his Yorker over and around the weekend, and uh, so far he hasn't really missed in this tournament. So um, it's a great bonus for us to have him firing it um, at the moment, and uh, I'm expecting big things come a semi with him. Last one, James. Can you talk to us a bit about your back of the hand slow ball? Against Sri Lanka, you used it. Uh, there are times you're using it almost as much as you stop ball in the, in the course of the over. How you how you developed it and, um, and what works or why it works for you? Uh, yeah, back on that game, I did use it a fair bit. I think because um, they got off to such a flyer in the chase, Sri Lanka, um, we had to try and change things. Um, so I decided to, I, I suppose, use more back of the hand deliveries and off cutters, and try and, I suppose, take the pace off the ball because they're doing quite well against our openers. So um, yeah, look, it's just something I've had. I worked at it when I when I was really young in the backyard with my old man. Uh, I bowled a bit of leg spin, so that's sort of that's sort of where it came from. And. Um, I'm bowling it now, so yeah, it's, it's nice to have it, but um, hopefully I can work on a couple more slow balls.